Hi, I'm Andrew Kane, State Politics Editor at the Richmond Times Dispatch. And with me are my colleagues, politics columnist Jeff Shapiro and politics reporter Dave Ress. And we're here to talk about the results in Virginia's Super Tuesday primary, uh, in which former President Donald Trump had a big win, as did uh, President Joe Biden. Um, fellas, let's talk a little bit about what surprised you, if anything, about the outcome. Uh, Jeff, why don't you start? Uh, no surprise in terms of the winners, but, you know, perhaps uh, a question. What if they gave a primary and nobody, nobody came? I mean, the turnouts were just abominably low compared to what we've seen in, in earlier primaries. Um, I was looking at some of the early results. Buchanan County and Coalfields, which had delivered for Donald Trump his biggest percentage in the 2016 Super Tuesday, actually 2016 primary up until that point, something like 69%, voted 95% for uh, Trump last night, uh, or excuse me, tonight, pardon me. Uh, but only 1,500 people bought Bobby to vote. Yeah, uh, Dave, we've got sort of a two-story uh, outcome here. One is that Trump won substantially, but there's a significant drop-off in turnout from 2016. There's a big drop-off in turnout from 2016. Um, I think we're talking about roughly 600,000 voters that we've counted so far. That's with about 90% reporting. Versus a million in 16. Uh, it's even more dramatic on the Democratic side, um, which then raises uh, the question of, you know, is Biden sort of kind of losing it in there? And that's really hard to tell. Yeah, it's, hard, it's hard to tell because everyone sort of knew what the result was going to be. Yeah, and just to give you the numbers, in 2020, when Democrats had a highly competitive primary here, mm -hmm. we had about 1.3 million people turn out. And on Tuesday, when we had basically no contest on the Democratic side, we had probably fewer than 300,000 total. Yeah. So, you know, one has to wonder what you know, this means, of course, for the general election in a blue trending state like Virginia, which has been solidly Democratic at the presidential level since 2008. Uh, I'd suggest that uh, Tim Kaine, who's up for a third term to the U.S. Senate, seems to be in pretty good shape. He'll be instrumental in helping Biden. It's sort of a trickle-up approach. Um, and it's not the only, Virginia's not the only state in which the Biden campaign could get a boost from a, a strong Senate candidate. And then one other thing, uh, to your point about uh, low turnouts, in the suburbs where Nikki Haley was hoping to do better. She just didn't. There were a few, though, that there was surprisingly close, well, not surprisingly close, but where that, that idea that the, the, the suburban voter was going to go for Haley, not, um, not Trump, um, James City County, Loudoun were very close. Um, Arlington, she won. Henrico, she was behind. Chesterfield, she was yeah. way behind. That was, to me, that was the surprise, is that Ches Chesterfield, Chesapeake, um, Prince William, which we've come to sort of think of as the Bellwaters, were really pretty close to the state split, uh, Trump v. Haley. And so that was, to me, that was kind of what was unusual. We had some suburbs where that, um, you know, suburban, suburban voters' uh, apparent distaste for Trump seemed to be a factor, and we have others where conventional wisdom was that it should have been and it didn't seem to be. And I think one wonders, you know, is this just sort of this, the inevitability that seems to have descended on the Republican contest that people just didn't bother to show up because they think this is already a done, done deal. Yeah, and most folks didn't show up on either side. So one of the things that struck me is that former President Trump on Saturday in Richmond was talking about the silent majority. Well, in November, we're going to find out who the silent majority really is, and uh, the outcome remains to be seen. So uh, interesting uh, results to, that we'll continue to digest. I want to thank my colleagues, Jeff Shapiro and Dave Russ, for joining me to have an initial dissection of some of these results. And we invite all of you to continue following our coverage on Richmond.com and in the Richmond Times-Dispatch.